Hi guys, today my dad's going to teach you earth science, weather, day three, layers of the atmosphere. I hope you have fun. Have a happy Monday. All right, guys, that was my daughter, Haley. Um, just so that we are all on the same page, please make sure that you check your remind and your email every day. I just sent everyone an important email regarding uh, marking period four. So check it, read it carefully, make sure you know what's up. Now, as far as this week, things that are being graded, you got a lab and you have a Google form. I took a break from Castle Learning for this week for you. All right, but I'll get you next week. Um, so these are going to be your grades. These are going to be your first grades of marking period four. Everything counts. Everything's being graded. So uh, make sure that you get it done. All right, so we're in day three, layers of the atmosphere. This is the lesson that you need to know in order to do your lab, which is one of your grades this week. So here we go. Um, the do now is talking about Mile High Stadium, which is in Denver. Why is it so unique for training? If any of you guys, uh, you athletes out there know anything about Denver or why people go there to train, it's because they can practice and basically work on their conditioning because there is so, um, there's less air there. So if you can perform at a high athletic performance in Denver, where there's very little oxygen, anytime you come down in elevation, um, you'll be able to perform a lot better because there's more oxygen. It's also why there's a lot of home runs there. If you hit the ball, there's less air, so there's less air friction, so the ball carries farther. All right, so here we go. A uh, couple practice questions from uh, last time. When the temperature of the water in compartment A goes down by 10 degrees, so this is going down by 10 degrees, what's going to happen on the other side? Well, as we mentioned before, heat will travel from hot to cold, so this one is going to go up by 10 degrees, so your answer should be 4, okay? Next one. Uh, here, water is being added, heated in the beaker. Um, which one of these drawings is going to show the movement of the water? So this is convection, right? Because it's of a liquid and it is heating up and cooling down. Remember, we spoke about this one discussing convection currents in the asthenosphere. So it's going to heat up over the heat source and then cool down on the other side. So it should look like choice one. All right, so here is using your page, I think, 15, I believe. Um, this is from your reference tables. This is converting pressures. So here, if they give you a barometric reading of 29.53, so 29, remember these are going up by 0 0.01. So 29.53 is right here. So your answer should be 1,000 millibars. Um, and then over here, which position is the wind speed going to be the slowest? We did not learn this yet, so we're going to hold off on this one. All right, so page 14 in your reference table. This is the layers of the atmosphere. Um, you should notice that there are four layers. One, two, three, four. Four, they get divided right here, here, and here. Things that it talks about is altitude, so how high up above sea level you are. Tells you temperatures, pressure, and the amount of water vapor. Okay, so three things, temperature, pressure, and water vapor, and how high up you are. Okay, so the three variables are the three things that I circled. All right, temperature, pressure, and water vapor concentration. How much water is in the air? So essentially, this is talking about humidity. All right, is it dry or is it humid, moist, wet, however you want to say it. Pressure, how much is the air weighing down on us? And temperature is temperature. All right, notice that it's in degrees Celsius. All right, vocab term, interface. We have discussed this before when we did layers of the earth. But uh, just 
brushing up on our vocab interface means boundary, okay? And it ends in pause. So tropopause is the end of the troposphere, the boundary between the stratosphere and the stratopause. Um, then you have the stratopause, which is the boundary between the stratosphere and the mesosphere. And then the mesopause, which is the boundary between the mesosphere and the thermosphere. Okay, fine. Two words for elevation. Obviously, we know altitude is what they are referring to in this one. But then you have things like height. Um, obviously, you have elevation. And then they might say above sea level. Notice here that we're talking kilometers and miles. So if you read on the miles side, it is going up by fives. If you read on the kilometers side, it is going up by tens. Make sure that you pay attention to questions and make sure that you read your scales properly. So here, if you were talking about um, the stratopause, right? I'm just paying attention to this line. In kilometers, it would be 50. And in um, miles, it would be a little over 30. So we might say like 31 or 32. Okay? All right. Next, how does temperature change in each zone? All right. So these are called temperature zones. And the reason why is because the trend changes in each zone. So if you look in the troposphere, it's going this way. It's going from 15 to negative 55, it's getting colder. Then in the stratosphere, it's going from negative 55 to zero. It's getting warmer, colder, warmer. So each time the temperature line makes a U-turn, it's basically dividing and making a new boundary. It's changing temperature zones. When it goes to the left, it gets colder. When it goes to the right, it gets warmer, okay? Next. How is pressure affected with increasing altitude? All right, so we're paying attention to pressure here. As we go up, pressure is going this way, right? And look, zero to one. So as you go up, there is less pressure. And this would be 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, right? So that's a major, major thing for you to understand. That's a big relationship that you will definitely get questions on. As you go up, there's less pressure. And that makes sense because there's less air weighing down on you. When you're all the way at sea level, right? There's all this air pushing down on you. So it's going to have the most pressure. All right. So here, who has the most air pressure on them? this person because they have the most air, okay? All right, how is water vapor affected with increasing altitude? Same deal, as you go up, there is less water vapor, okay? And notice, you go from zero to 40, and it gets less and less. Again, make sure that you understand that relationship. Notice, weather only happens in this red zone right here, basically in the troposphere. All right, troposphere is the only layer that has water in it, so therefore it's the only layer that has weather in it, okay? So summary, state the following relationship. As altitude within the troposphere increases, the amount of water generally decreases. We just spoke about that. Identify the approximate altitude in kilometers of the mesopause. All right, mesopause is right here. In kilometers, we're at 80. Okay. Lastly, identify the list that shows the atmospheric layers in the correct order upward from the surface. So you're just reading an order from bottom to top. Troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, and thermosphere. As altitude increases from the tropopause to the mesopause, so now we're, if you're going from here to here, you are talking about the stratosphere, okay? That atmospheric temperature will 
increase, then decrease. All right, so take a look. From the tropopause to the mesopause, look at what happens to temperature. It got warmer and then it got colder, okay? An air temperature of 95, most likely, all right, so I skipped that one. So 95 degrees is right around here. The only place that has a temperature of that is going to fall into the thermosphere. All right, so as far as what I want you guys to handle now is this is our note sheet, which, I mean, you guys should be able to handle both. I'm going to do the first page with you. And then um, I'll explain what you have to do for your lab. So here, it's all things that we mentioned already. The three most important variables to determine whether it is the three things that it mentioned on your reference table page. So it is pressure, temperature, and water content. Okay, two other words for elevation, we already said altitude, and you also have height. The two units, kilometers and miles. Now, this is the part that I wanted to really focus on, number four, because you got to be able to read this chart. In the troposphere, you are starting your temperature right here at 15 degrees Celsius, and you are ending it here, which is negative 55. What has happened? What's What was the trend? Did it get colder or warmer? And this one, it got colder as, it, as you got higher up. Okay, so now you would just continue. So the stratosphere is going from where we just left off, negative 55 Celsius, and going up to here, which is zero degrees Celsius, which was getting warmer. Then we went from zero degrees Celsius right here to here, which is negative 90 degrees Celsius. So it got colder again. And the thermosphere, it went from negative 90 to, you know, basically infinitely warm. So we'll just say around 100 degrees Celsius and it got warmer. So here's the reason why the temperature changes. In the stratosphere is the ozone layer. Ozone layer absorbs ultraviolet radiation, so that's why it heats us up. And then over here, the thermosphere, it warms up because you're getting closer to the sun. This is climbing up, this is climbing up, it gets colder, fine. All right, how is pressure affected with increasing altitude? As you go up, pressure decreases as the altitude becomes as the at what altitude does the pressure become zero all right so right around here pressure is zero so that's going to be approximately 50 kilometers why does this happen there's less air pushing down okay over here, when we're talking about water vapor, as you go up, there is less water vapor. All right. What is the highest elevation in the atmosphere that water vapor could be found? All right. Right here is where we stop. So approximately 20 kilometers. Okay. Around 20, right? Right around here. Um, in what layer of the atmosphere is most water vapor found? We said that is the troposphere. That is the only layer that has weather. Okay. All right. So you guys are going to do this page on your own. Again, I'll post a key later on. Um, make sure you try to do it on your own and then check it, um, to make sure that you understand. If you have any questions, reach out. As far as tomorrow, Tuesday, you guys are going to be working on this, the Layers of the Atmosphere Lab. I put it in the content library. It's also in Schoology. Um, it's a graphing lab. You're going to graph this. Make sure that you do all of the procedures. Don't leave anything out. 
and then you got a couple basic questions. Pretty simple. Um, if you do it right, this is what your graph should look like if you do everything. Make sure that you do everything in that list. All right, so that is that. I hope everyone has a great week. I miss you guys a whole bunch.